Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Richard Clark, uh, Rich Clark, and I've been a hypnotherapist for the last eight years, and I've been a holistic therapist for the last 14 years. So a throwback Thursday, as this week's theme has been about death and grief uh, for Truthful Tuesday, and as for tomorrow, Friday, fear, uh, fears and phobias will be death and fear of the unknown. I'm going to talk about two TV programs which talk about death, and it's actually from the same creator called Brian Fuller. So the first one to talk about is Dead Like Me. So Dead Like Me was an American comedy drama series um, starring Ellen Mouffe and Mandy Pat, um, Patinkin as grim reapers who reside and work in Seattle, Washington. Um, the show was created by Brian Fuller for the Showtime uh, cable network where it ran for two seasons. Fuller left the show five episodes into the first season because of creative differences and this is where um, his other show, Pushing, like Babies, Pushing Babies, I'll mention next, I think was a better show. However, he did this first and so what what is this story about dead like me so 18 year old georgia uh george and as she calls herself is the show's protagonist and narrator george dies early in the pilot episode and becomes one of the undead grim reaper george soon learns that a reaper's job is to remove the souls of people preferably just before they die and escort them on to, until they move on to into their afterlife george is deaf leaves behind her mother and the rest of the family at a point her relationship with them were on shaky ground the show explores the experience of a small team of such reapers, as well as the chances in George and her family as they deal with George's death. So the main plot is this George is, uh, she's aloof and emotional distance from her family and shies away from her life. After dropping out of college, she takes a temp job. And unfortunately, after on her lunch break, on the first day, she's hit and killed by a toilet seat falling from a um, de-orbiting Mia Speed space station. God, it's a comedy, remember? So it's a bit, it's very like macabre sort of humour. She's informed that rather than moving on to the great beyond, she will become a grim reaper in the external influence division, collecting souls of people who die in accidents. Um, this is many of them have a Rube Goldberg style complexity. So Rube Goldberg, um, David Chi, um, they die in this kind of very surreal way and then homicides. Hey, dead girl. Hold on there a minute. That's Rube. He's undead. They say there are like five psychological stages of death. Ironically, this applies even if you're already dead. Number one, denial. This isn't happening. This isn't real. Oh, Peanut, this is as real as it gets. You're dead. That's Betty, also undead. This is yours. Mercy, that thing made a horrible noise, didn't it? But I don't remember feeling anything. Your soul was popped out before impact. We do that for violent deaths as a courtesy. But I didn't want to die. Oh, nobody does except suicides. They're no fun. Number two is anger. I'm only 18. I haven't done anything. This isn't fair. So, what are you, like, angels or something? Oh, no, no, ma'am. <laughs> Angels don't like getting their hands dirty. You know, uh, upper management types. We have the unfortunate distinction of being called Grim Reapers. Number three is bargaining. Well, then can't you take somebody else? Like, uh, well, an old person? Or that homeless guy? I won't tell, I promise. All right. Really? No. Well, I want my life back. It's not like you were doing anything with it. And then there's depression. <laughs> I know what might cheer you up. What? Your autopsy. Each reaper has a secret quota of souls. Once the quota is met, the reaper moves on to another realm and the last soul reaped then takes his or her job collecting souls. In season one, George, unfortunately dying because she's 18, has trouble adjusting to her circumstances, collecting souls while holding down a day job. And because of that, she sees her life, how it's carrying on without her and how it's basically disintegrating into problems. Season two, she's mostly just to know of a few unresolved issues from her life and her afterlife. Her family is struggling with her death. 
and it just all these different things happen. The main characters have issues with life after death, but they cope with it in different ways. So there's a character called Mason, who's a British guy called Callum, Callum Blue, results to alcohol and drugs. Daisy is um, puts on a, a veneer of perkiness. She was originally a 50s actor, like a Marilyn Monroe type. Uh, you really shouldn't leave now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and don't come back, I'm done with you. Good for you. I think you're right, though, I did. Just one thing, sweetie. You don't end things. I end them. You don't tell me you're done. I do. You're worse than bad luck. You're a black fucking hole. Yeah, fuck you. And you're not as genteel as you look, Daisy. Act as pretty as you want. I just can't shake the feeling you're really just a cheap little billy piece of hell. Roxy was is becomes physically and verbally aggressive, and then Rube is um, are more straightforward about their sadness. So with these they work in these different ways so they've all got different characters so like i said george is the protagonist then we've got rube is the head of the group of the reapers he is responsible for passing out reaping a silence nearly always on yellow post-it notes so there's always this thing of yellow post-it notes let's see he becomes a father figure to some of them and in his grim reaping afterlife and has a daughter named rosie whom he's also called peanut the nana of his death was not revealed but in one episode his name and picture are seen in an old wanted poster alleging that he was a bank robber because of this, he's believed he died at the hands of the police. He looks the same as he did while alive, possibly because his time of death was nearly 100 years earlier and everyone could possibly identify him has died. So this is what they're doing. So they're kind of living a life that people can't identify them. Um, so they sort of go back to living a half normal life, but then they can't do things normal people do. Hi. Hi, Callum. Excuse me. Hey. Thank you. What a day I've had. Oh. You almost bought this. Afternoon, ladies. You two old friends. Uh, her daughter's in my son's class. Oh. I have a question for you. Is everyone in this line an asshole? Uh, excuse me? Is everyone you just cut in front of an asshole? Uh, no. So it's just you then? I have children in the car. I got a cake in the oven. He's got three minutes left on the meter. She's got a lunch meeting. We all have a finite amount of time. I get in the back of the line. And don't use your children like that. It's shameful. Uh, Mason was a British drug addict, alcohol and thief, but a likable person. He acts as an older brother to George and is attracted to Daisy. He's originally from London and died in 1960 by drilling a hole in his head to achieve a permanent high. He considered the least responsible of the crew and often makes gaps cuts his reaps close or is drunk or much high most of the time. Roxy is a strong-willed, sassy, independent woman whose job is a meter maid, but she later becomes a police officer. She was strangled to death by a jealous roommate in 1982 with leg warmers, which Roxy had invented. Although she's generally seen as tough and not, she has a softer side. In written, they don't go back. Oh, all right. Okay, then why don't you just shove those tickets where the sun don't shine, miss? Step aside, sir. As I told you yesterday, if you have a complaint, there's a system in place. Your system can suck my dick, miss. Okay? Now, I ain't ever gonna pay those fucking tickets. So just take your tickets, put them in your fucking pocket, and walk off. You need to step off. Step off. Step off. Okay. Okay. Step off! Sir! That is city property! Put out this to me, okay? I ain't ever gonna pay those tickets, so you take them back! I don't give a fuck about your goddamn fucking lose, so you take these goddamn tickets back! Ho, ho, hold up now! Now I can tolerate you cursing me out, screaming at me, disrespecting my vehicle, but don't you ever put your hands on me! <laughs> And that's when Roxy decided she didn't care about breaking the rules either. Let me tell you something. I am trying to do my job, which is definitely my day job. If you keep fucking with me, 
There are other skills I can employ that will give your life a turn for the strange and the painful. Do you understand me? Um, Betty Roma, which she was only in five episodes, was a confident, well-adjusted reaper, and she keeps polarized for all having, and her signature was a way of separating herself from the whole cloak and sickle thing. She did, died in 1926 while Cliff died with a fiance in a similar fashion to the reaping of George, though Rube did not personally reap Betty. Uh, Daisy Adair, who then takes over from George, uh, from sorry, not from George, from uh, Betty, is the spoiled actress who often tells stories about her alleged sexual plays with classic film stars. And she died in 1938 of vixiation smoke inhalation. And again, these all these different things she claims. Um, so all these different people have these issues going on. There's also um, some evil reapers as well they have to get rid of and also different people they meet. So with the Grim Reaper in the world of, world of Death Flammy, Grim Reapers do not wear black coats or carry scythes, but their role remains traditional. They remove the souls of the living before death and escort them into the afterlife. One becomes a reaper by being the last soul collected when one's re own reaper meets his, his or own secret quota. In the series, Death has a list of who is scheduled to die and when. The list is delivered to the head of the group by a shadowy figure, which is then delivery made to the Rube's apartment. And that delivery is made by an actual shadow with a list of names being corporal only when it's delivered. So they know who's going to die before they die. Um, completing that assignment is often difficult for the Reapers. They receive only the first and sometimes initial and last name of the person about to die at the location estimated time of death. Remember, it's all in Washington, Seattle. So this is where the idea of this is it's sort of a more of a um, playful way of looking at how reapers and how they collect people and they die. Um, the only thing is it with like pushing daisies, which I think is a lot better, is just the, the, there's more emotional depth with the characters where I don't think um, Dead Like Me works so well. So um, the other thing as well, reapers do not actually kill the living. Instead, death are arranged by gravelings. Um, this is not your role model. In case you haven't noticed, I'm really sorry. And you'll be really sorry till I decide to forgive you or till you decide to stop doing the stupid things you do that make you sorry. Haven't you ever tried to save anybody? No. Have you? I need to be unconscious. I know I piss you off, but you piss me off too. Oh, I piss you off? Why is it so easy for you to accept everything the way it is? Why don't you ask questions? Well, because I'm not that curious. If you don't get this right, someone's going to drop another toilet seat on your head and that'll be loud. Give this to Roxy when she shows up. Here, I got some. Buy yourself a waffle. Cherry on top. Do you think I'm a constipator? Heed his advice and stay on his good side. He's like a volcano, George. He erupts and he spews lava and all the little villagers, they run around and they run around for their lives. But you know, he stops and you can go back to the safety of your own home. How long is he gonna stay mad? I've seen him stay mad for years. I've seen it, but it's not like this pit bull mad. It's like this disturbing, simmering, quiet rage mad. But he likes you, George. He'll stay mad for less time. Days? Weeks? What is that other one after that one? Months? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. And these are mischievous gremlin-like creatures that cause accidents and mishaps. So that's something they have to stop as well, because that can also then cause accidents which shouldn't happen to people. So there's all these sort of different things of how that works. Um, the idea of creation, though, is also created the idea of how creation is done. And so there's sort of this very much, it's not anti-religious, but it's also sort of going more into the idea of atheism, there is no God and so forth. For that. So it's an interesting show for that reason. So anyway, as it was done in the uh, mid 2000s, um, very much, you know, some of the effects are probably a bit out of date, but the actual plot of it, the idea of how that works and why it works, I think is really interesting in the way, a good look, way of looking at death and how people work. So anyway, this is a show I recommend. And I think 
for black for dark comedy humor i think it's a good way of looking at death and looking at how people behave and how they respond when they've died and it also gives you this um very much a a moral of that sometimes you have to live your best life before you die and that's kind of what's the main message within it so anyway dead like me i'm sure it's on um some downloadable or a streaming channel if not i'm sure some of the episodes are on uh youtube i know pushing daisies is which i'll talk about next so anyway enjoy